distinguished guests, faculty, and graduating class of 2018. Story goes something like this. It was back in the 60s, I, I don't even know what year, but I had left a very good job at the Walt Disney Studio to start my own company. Uh, uh, a bold move, maybe even a stupid move. But, but we did it because we wanted to. We pushed the door open. We had been working all night and uh, cutting a film. It was a film, I think, the first time I had directed a film, and I had been working with my editor, Dominic Damasio, and we pushed the door open, and lo and behold, it wasn't nighttime, the sun was rising, and we realized that we had been editing film all night long. And we walked out into the early morning uh, Hollywood. The sun was coming up, people were on their way to work, and we headed out looking for a diner and a cup of coffee. We should have felt exhausted having worked all night, but we actually felt exhilarated. That's the feeling you get when you work hard and you're doing the job you love. And uh, so much has changed since that time. Uh, the technology, the leaps forward we've made uh, have, has been incredible. We were cutting film back then on, on an old movieola. Anybody remember those? This is before the flatbeds. You know, a movieola. Now I can edit film on a laptop while on a flight. But this was in the ancient days where we cut film, physically cut the film. And we've watched technology change incredibly over the last 30, 40 years. It's just been an amazing time. A truly amazing time, but with all the changes that I've seen, three things haven't changed. And I'd like to talk to you about those three things. Number one, great ideas. Brilliant ideas. Still need those. Collaboration. Working with others to create something great. Still need that. And finally, your own personal passion what you bring to the job because you truly love it. Those things are important. And even though our technology, the tools we use today have changed, those three things haven't changed and they never will. Let's talk about ideas. I'm, I'm sort of an idea man. Uh, apparently the old man thought so, uh, Walt Disney found me in his studio and he thought I had some good ideas and so he basically tossed me into his story department. I had never done story before. I had never written a movie before, but Walt thought I could do it. And so I began doing it. I had no idea I could do this job. People often ask me as a creative guy, how do you do this job? How do you deal with writer's block, for example? And I tell my students, there's no such thing as writer's block. Uh, that's an indulgence. If you are a professional writer, then you, you can't afford writer's block. You have to do the job because that's what you're being paid to do. And where do the ideas come from? Well, the ideas are all around you. You just have to be open to them. Be observant. I remember when I was in high school, in high school English lit, I, I, I was a terrible student because I could not write anything. Then I suddenly realized the reason I couldn't write was because I didn't know anything and I hadn't experienced anything. I hadn't lived life. So the ideas are out there. They're all around you. So you should have no problem with ideas and creativity because it's all there. Just be open to it, look around, and just drink it in. Uh, travel. Leave, leave your hometown. Uh, leave the state. Leave the country if you have to and go looking for ideas because they're all around you. What about number two? Collaboration. You know, in the job I do, it's pretty much a team sport. It's working with other talented people. And that's a very important thing, to be respectful of others, to play well with others. I've had the opportunity of working with amazing people over the years. Uh, 
during my career at Disney, my career at Pixar, and even with my own company, I had the opportunity to work with amazing talent. And really, when you collaborate with others, it just makes you that much better. So never, uh, never downplay collaboration. That is very important. Back in the 1960s, I was working with my partner, Vance Gary, on a sequence in The Jungle Book. It was a pretty good sequence, and even Walt Disney liked it. The old man thought the sequence was playing pretty well, but he said, you know what? The sequence could be better. It needs a song. We collaborated with Robert and Richard Sherman, and they wrote a wonderful little song called Trust in Me, where the snake, uh, the python, Ka, hypnotizes little Mowgli, and he does it to a wonderful little song, and we just peppered in all these gags. And that collaborative effort made that sequence that much better. But when you work with great people, when you collaborate with others, your work is going to be that much better. And many a time when I'm working on a script, I might be working by myself just a little bit, but eventually I will move into the story room where I'll work with other talented people. I will collaborate with others, and we will make something really great because we are bringing uh, great talents, great minds together, and we're making something quite wonderful. And so I've always loved the collaborative aspect of this business. I love working with other talented people. And that's, that's been a real joy in doing this job. Number three, of course, is what you bring to this job, your own personal love, your own personal passion. That is critical because that's why we do this job. We don't do it for fame and we don't do it for money. We do it because we have to because we are in love with what we do. When I was a little kid, I decided, I think I was in middle school, that I wanted to make animated cartoons. And lo and behold, there was just nothing out there. You couldn't even go to a store and buy the tools you needed to do animation. So I remember going to the art store and buying sheets of uh, acetate and slicing them up and making my own cells, punching holes in them because you had to get a paper punch and punch holes in the cells because you couldn't even go out and buy this stuff. I had no idea if it was even for sale. So I made my own tools. Eventually I built my own camera stand with the help of my grandmother so I could make animated cartoons. Why? Because I truly love this job. It was something that I had to do. And the greatest moment of my life was back in 1956 when a bunch of us, all kids, just out of school, most of us around uh, 19, 20 years old, came to the Walt Disney Studio to begin our journey. And what a journey it's been. We loved what we did, and that's why we were there. We came into this crazy business of animation when the business was looked upon by most as a dying business. Walt Disney was actually laying off veteran animators because he simply no longer needed them. So here we were as kids coming into the business and seeing veteran animators being let go because they simply weren't needed. There simply wasn't enough work for animators even at the Walt Disney Studio. But you know what? Most of us never left. We looked at this job as a possible dead end, but because we loved it so much, we could not give up on it. And so we hung in there and we stayed with it. And all of the members of my class went on to do great things. They became producers, they became directors, they became screenwriters. Some even, like my pal Jane Bear, even opened her own animation studio. A woman opened her own studio because she so loved this crazy business. So that's what's wonderful about the job I've had and the career I've had and the amazing people I've had the opportunity to work with. And it's just been more than I could ever have imagined. I came to Disney just hoping to get a job to be an artist and work at a drawing board. And then my job turned out to be so much more than that so much more than I could ever have imagined. Imagine having the opportunity to work with Walt Disney himself. The Disney Studio staff numbered in the hundreds, 
maybe 12 people who regularly met with Walt Disney out of that huge staff. Luckily, I was one of the people in that room with Walt Disney. What are the chances? What are the chances of that? An amazing opportunity, and it just came my way. Well, at the Disney Studio, I've had the opportunity to work with remarkable talents on any number of projects. Imagine working with Julie Andrews and Dick Van Dyke on Mary Poppins. What a pleasure that was. And imagine having a noted author like Douglas Adams poke his head in your office one day and plop down and, and have a conversation. A guy whose books I had read, and now here he is talking to me. Imagine hanging out with Tom Hanks on the movie set or enjoying a glass of wine with Helen Mirren. Imagine stepping out of a limousine on the red carpet at the Oscars. These were things I could not even have imagined when I was a child. And yet all these things came my way because I think, as I look back on it, I had the greatest job in the world. Looking back on that time when Dominic Damasio and I stepped out of our studio door into the early morning hours of Hollywood, having worked all night on a movie and realizing that we were not tired, we were not exhausted because we had the greatest job in the world. We had the opportunity to, to create, to tell stories, to entertain, and maybe even inspire. And that's the great opportunity all of you have to come into this amazing business that demands great ideas, collaboration, and the personal passion you bring to this job. So a lot has changed since my time at the Walt Disney Studio back in 1956 when I began my career. It's been an incredible journey and uh, the projects I've had come my way have just been remarkable. And every one of those things has been a real joy. And now, after having had this amazing career, I now step aside and hand this job, this opportunity, over to all of you. Because I know you'll embrace it. I know you'll do amazing things. I know you'll probably do a whole lot more than we ever did. Success is out there waiting for you. All you have to do now is go get it. Thank you.